Here we have a nice question about overhead allocation and our company is Holt Manufacturing, so we'll jump right in and get to the information. Holt Manufacturing just completed its first year of operations. Holt produces a new type of computer accessory for storing and charging laptop computers. Planning the production levels from month to month in this new business has been a challenge. Managers and sales associates are making new business contacts and securing orders, but the sales level each month can vary. The company is located in the state of Indiana in the U.S. and currently only sells to small retailers in the Midwestern part of the United States. Now, this is all nice and interesting information, but it really doesn't tell us a lot about what we're going to have to do in the question. There's no numbers. There's real no specific situation here other than they tell us that it is, it is this company's first year of operations. And the reason that that first year of operations might be important is it means there's no beginning inventory. We're just starting fresh with this company. So continuing, the company sales force is working to identify new sales opportunities in areas outside of the Midwest. Sydney Wright is the sales manager for Holt Manufacturing. Wright believes that projections for sales to increase over the next two to four years are accurate based on the planned expansion of the company's sales market. Olivia Radner is the production manager for the business. Radner is struggling to prepare production forecasts based on the volatile sales volume in the new business. And then they give us production levels are determined using forecasted sales data. And following is a summary of the results for Holt's first year of operations. So sales was $1,500,000. Unadjusted cost of goods sold is $970,000. And selling and administrative expenses were $528,000. That unadjusted is a key word here because it implies that there might be some adjustments, but right now this number that we have is an unadjusted number. Ending balances in the inventory accounts are as follows. Raw materials, 40,000, work in process, 22,000, and finished goods, 14,500. And a little more information. Holt estimated overhead at the beginning of the year to be $300,000. Overhead is assigned based on machine hours which were estimated to be $48,000 for the year. Actual machine hours this year were 41,000, and actual overhead incurred in this year was 260,000. So with this information that they're, that they're presenting here, we're kind of seeing what's gonna happen. We have the actual number, we have the budgeted number, we have the budgeted number of machine hours, we have the actual number of machine hours, and so we can kind of guess that some of this is going to be used going forward. So looking at the requirements that we have, the first of those requirements, calculate the amount of Holt's underapplied or overapplied overhead, show your calculations and we can kind of see how that's going to be done. The second requirement, identify and describe two different methods Holt could use to allocate this underapplied or overapplied overhead at the end of the year. Okay, so we know there is some under, under or overapplied overhead. The third requirement is identify and explain the most appropriate method to allocate this underapplied or overapplied overhead in this situation. Fourth, identify and explain the impact that the underapplied or overapplied overhead has on Holt's profitability for this year. And that's that unadjusted number. Okay, that unadjusted cost of goods sold is going to be adjusted here. Number five, Explain how activity-based costing might help Holt in future years. Number six, what type of budgeting could Holt use to monitor performance? And so what we have here are six requirements. Some of those requirements are kind of theoretical, and some of those requirements are going to require some calculation. So we'll go right ahead and start with requirement number one. Calculate the amount of Holt's under-applied or over-applied overhead. Show your calculations. Well, we just need to make certain that we understand what it is that we're doing. And our formula that we're going to be looking for is actual overhead minus applied overhead. And that's going to give us our amount of over or under applied. And so we need to determine how much overhead was applied. The actual number we'll see was given to us. And so we just need to compare those two numbers. Now, when we're going to do this application, we need to know what that predetermined overhead rate is is now remember that predetermined rate is determined at the beginning of the period and so we're using estimated or budgeted the esti estimated amount of overhead the estimated number of machine hours in this case because that's what they're doing now those numbers are given to us okay we have the estimated 
amount, we have the estimated number of hours, and that gives us our 625 per hour. That 625 per hour is going to be multiplied by the actual number of machine hours as we went through that production process. And so what we end up with is that $6.25 per hour multiplied by the 41,000 hours of actual overhead that we had during the year that was given to us. And that gives us an, an applied, or applied overhead of $256,250. And so we have the actual number of $260,000. We applied $256,250. And so our answer here to this first requirement is 3,750 under applied. We actually incurred more overhead than was applied during the year. And if we go back and look at the information that was given to us, this is where we're getting all of these numbers. That's our 300,000 estimated, our 48,000 estimated number of machine hours. Here's our actual 260,000 of overhead and the actual 41,000 machine hours. Okay, so we're just pulling, most of this information is given to us in the question. We just need to make certain that we're using it in the right way. And so that's our 3,750 under applied overhead is the amount of under applied overhead. So that's requirement one, that's one of our calculations. Requirement number two, identify and describe two different methods Holt could use to allocate this underapplied or overapplied overhead at the end of the year. Okay, how is it that we're going to allocate? What are we going to do with this overhead at the end of the year? Now, really what we're looking at here is this distinction between a material and an immaterial amount. Okay, if it's an immaterial amount, we're just going to put it into cost of goods sold. But if it's a material amount, we're going to make certain that we allocate that to ending whip, ending finished goods, and cost of goods sold. So we're going to need to determine if this is a material or an immaterial amount. But also notice that it asks us to kind of come up with well, the two different methods, and those are the two different methods that we have. Now, when we look at the answer that is suggested here, we see a little bit more added to that, which is absolutely fine. The two methods for allocating the balance of manufacturing overhead are pro rata, also known as proration, and closing the amount directly to the cost of goods sold. Okay, so those are the two methods that we talked about. And then it says, under proration, the under or over applied overhead is allocated between the ending balances of work in process inventory, finished goods, and the cost of goods sold on a pro rata basis using ending balances. The final balance of manufacturing overhead is zero, after the entire amount is transferred proportionally to these accounts. Under the write-off to cost of goods sold method, the total of the under or over applied overhead is all transferred to cost of goods sold. So those are the two methods we're talking about. Now, it's the third requirement here that asks us to identify and explain the most appropriate method to allocate this under applied or over applied overhead in this situation. This is where generally we're looking at whether it's material or not. But they say the selection of the method to use should be based on management's knowledge of what caused the under or over allocation during the period, as well as the materiality of the amount. And so what they're adding here is really this, this question of, is there a specific cause that, that made this happen? Was there some project that went wrong? Was there some specific event that went wrong? And if that's the case, then maybe we need to charge directly to that event or to that project, that batch, whatever the case may be. But in this question, we're not given any information about that. We're not told that there was some unique situation or unique circumstance. And so what we're going to do here is simply look at whether it's material or not. So in Holt's case, the underapplied overhead of 3,750 is a relatively small amount compared to the size of the operations. $1,500,000 of sales. The, companies, the company maintains relatively small levels of inventory compared to the cost of goods sold. Work in process, 22,000. Finished goods, 14,500. Compared to the unadjusted cost of goods sold of $970,000. So here's the conclusion. For these reasons, Holt should allocate the underapplied overhead directly to cost of goods sold. And this last kind of Conclusion here, this is important. This is what brings it all together in terms of answering the question. 
The question was, what is the most appropriate method? And we've given why it is that this is the most appropriate method. Now, the next thing is, in requirement number four, what, what's the result of this? Identify and explain the impact that the underapplied or overapplied overhead has on Holt's profitability for the year. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of build this up. So we start by saying preliminary results prior to adjusting for the under over applied overhead show that the co company is profitable for the first year. And we get that information. Sales given to us, unadjusted cost of goods sold given to us. All of this is information that is in the question, selling an administrative 528,000. And so if we go back to the information that was given to us, all of that information is presented right here in the information. We're just kind of recreating that in terms of putting it into the presentation, the format of the income statement. And so we end up with a net income of $2,000. Now remember here that we have 3,750 of that underapplied overhead. So closing out the underapplied overhead directly to cost of goods sold will increase cost of goods sold. And the closing entry will credit manufacturing overhead. So we're increasing cost of goods sold. So by increasing the cost of goods sold, the net income, the profitability of the company decreases. In this case, while the adjustment is small, it is enough to move the company from a net income to a net loss. And we get this new income statement. And now our cost of goods sold has been increased. It's now 973750 which means our net income is now a net loss. Not a material amount, that 3750 was not a material amount from a quantitative standpoint, from the amount, but from the qualitative standpoint of it moving us from a profit to a loss, that is obviously a significant event that happened as a result of just this $3,750. Now requirement number five is explain how activity-based costing might help Holt in future years. Well, we just kind of need to understand what we're talking about with activity-based costing in that we're setting up these cost drivers. By having multiple cost drivers throughout the production process, we might be able to get a little bit more accurate costing information. And as we go forward, having more accurate costing information, better pricing, better controls, and all of that. And so that's kind of where our answer is going to, to go. So the suggested answer, activity-based costing refines a costing system by identifying individual activities as the fundamental cost objects. Holt would be able to identify cost objects and various cost pools for overhead. Using ABC, Holt would refine and improve their cost analysis by using different cost pools and drivers for various overhead activities. ABC cost drivers have a better cause and effect relationship with costs in the cost pool. Activity-based costing provides more accurate costing that will provide better information for decision making. Now the cost of activity-based costing should be considered as the cost of implementing such a system can be significant. If machine hours truly drive most of the overhead costs or Holt, Holt produces only one product, activity-based costing might not be beneficial. In this last paragraph here where we say there's a cost to this. This is important. This is a nice little add-on. I wouldn't say that it's specifically required because the question is how it might help Holt in future years, but putting this in, saying, hey, there's still a cost-benefit analysis that we need to do. It's a nice touch to make certain you're going to get the maximum points that you can out of that. So this takes us then to our last requirement, what type of budgeting could Holt use to monitor performance? Now, this isn't really something that's specific to Holt. This is just kind of the budgeting process as a whole for a company. And if we're trying to monitor performance, there needs to be a way to compare performance to what it was supposed to be. And this is getting into this whole idea of a, a budget, that flexible budget, and comparing those actual results to that flexible budget, looking at variances. We're not talking about variances per se here, but this is what we're looking for in terms of how are we going to be able to use the budget to measure our performance. And so our answer to this, the key to monitoring the business's performance with budgets will be to use flexible budgeting, getting that right there in the first sentence. As activity levels could change and vary from the original master budget plans, Holt should use flexible budgeting to compare actual results to a budget based on actual production levels. 
Managers can use the flexible budget as part of the planning process to predict how the budget will change under various scenarios, such as worst case or best case scenario. And they can also use the flexible budget as a benchmark for evaluating performance after the fact or as part of the control process. And so just saying there that we should be using flexible budgeting as the way that we're going to be able to understand and use that to measure our performance. So here's our question. We had a little bit of numbers, a little bit of calculation, a little bit of theory as well. Nothing terribly in depth here. We used all that information that was given in the question to make the calculations. Again, here's this issue of just that small amount of, of a number, that kind of immaterial quantitatively amount, caused our company to go from a profit to a loss, but that's just kind of the way the cookie crumbles in this case. So nice question here about overhead analysis, touching into activity-based costing, and also a little bit about budgeting as well.